Hi, I'm Ness and I'm a senior at the University of Houston, uh, majoring in psychology and English literature. And today I will be interviewing uh, Mark Paisley. Hi, Mark. Hey, how are you doing? Doing well, how are you? Good, good. Mark is a project manager and engineer at Thomas Moser Cabinet Makers, and he's also a member of the WCMA, uh, which stands for the Wood Component Manufacturers Association. Um, WCMA advances and promotes the interests of the North American wood products industry through interactive and innovative manufacturing solutions. So, uh, Mark, I kind of want to talk to you a little bit um, about your job today, if that's all right. First and foremost, uh, could you describe what your typical workday entails and uh, maybe what your first few years in the career was like? Sure, yeah. Um, I guess my typical workday is probably sort of atypical. Each day is quite a bit different. Um, our shop is probably small to mid-sized. We've got around uh, 50 or 60 people building furniture in the shop. Um, and our product offering is quite diverse. Uh, plus, we do custom lines and or custom designs in addition to uh, the standard product line. And uh, my responsibilities cover quite a bit of stuff: uh, engineering, design, supply chain, uh, we do project management, and then the business sectors that we work within are also uh, fairly diverse, which is like contract work, which is usually large projects, private schools, universities. Um, mm -hmm corporate offices, that sort of thing, business to business, uh, with restaurant business, and then residential. Residential is the majority of our business, but we have all of those other things going on as well, which is all that, all the specification of that product runs through the engineering, engineering team. We've got a six person engineering team, uh, plus me. Um, so we, that the day to day work, changes uh, quite a bit depending on what's going on through the shop, whether we have a large project coming through or whether it's uh, whether it's in a little bit of a dry spell on the contract project and almost all residential. I usually spend the early part of the week kind of getting a game plan for the for the week, updating metrics and that sort of thing. And then the remainder on the, of the week um, changes focus depending on the needs. Uh, you definitely don't get bored with the monotony of things over and over again. It's always something, always something different. Um, I guess the main thread throughout every day is problem solving and trying to stay agile to keep keep the top thing on the top of the list. Um, as far as the first couple of years in my career, um, I uh, I came into I've been at Thomas Moser for uh, 14 years now. And uh, I came in as just a, a, into the engineering department, um, started doing drawings um, of standard product and then converting it from an old CAD system to a new CAD system. And then slowly got into doing most of what my first three to five years, I guess, was doing all the custom design and quoting um, on the residential side of the business. So that, that got me into doing a lot of, seeing a lot of the modifications and then learning a lot about how the stuff was built and where, where components came from when we were sourcing new steam bendings and that sort of thing. So. Wow. That sounds both very interactive and demanding at the same time. It's fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you said that you learned a lot in your first couple of years. Um, did you go into the job without a lot of um, experience on the subject or were there any like maybe high school or college classes that you felt prepared you for this kind of occupation? Yeah, um, I was pretty much from high school on, I've always been drawn to woodworking. Um, in high school, I took college. I was, it was kind of an odd mix, at least at the small high school that I went to in Northeastern <coughs> of doing um, uh, college prep courses, but I was also in the wood shop as much as I possibly could be. If I didn't have to be in some other class, I was down on the wood shop. I was a, a teacher's assistant at that point. Um, after high school, I went to uh, the University of Rio Grande. They've got a fun woodworking program that focuses mainly on uh, reproduction furniture from the late 17th, early 18th century. Um, and that uh, I did that, and then upon graduating from there, 
also stayed in the sort of in the wood industry, worked in a boat yard doing interiors for a year, um, and then went back to college at Ohio University for engineering. Um, there's an industrial technology program was the program that I was in, which um, that worked really well for the way I learned things. It was partial classroom work, and then you know, the second half of most classes were down in the labs in the basement of the engineering school. Metal, metal machining, plastics, woodworking, uh, casting, sheet metal work. There was there was a lo- very diverse group of labs down there, so you got got to learn a lot about it, or a little, or enough to really understand it about a lot of different things. And uh, mm-hmm. in the time that I was down there, I also worked in a small cabinet shop there locally. Wow, that sounds like you've done a lot. That actually kind of answers um, my next question which was going to be if there were any part-time jobs, uh, internships, or apprenticeships that you felt um, prepared you for the occupation or right. some yeah. extracurriculars that you feel would prepare others. Yeah, yeah. The entire time when I was at Ohio University, especially, I worked in the cabinet shop the entire time, and that, that, was, a, mm-hmm. that was a great spot. It was probably a very unique spot. It was a small two-person shop plus me there part-time at the, at the time when, uh, for the four years that I was there. And they, they took the product from literally from the trees to installing it in the customer's, in a customer's house. We cut trees, we saw the, saw the lumber up. Uh, we had a dry air, there was a small dry kiln there and we built the furniture, finished the furniture, installed, installed the, st- the, the furniture or the kitchen cabinets, depending on what we were doing for our client. So that was, that was that was a great experience just because it basically went went soup to nuts and uh and even though it was a small shop it's still you still learn a lot in that so that was that was probably pretty big and getting my feet wet in a lot of the wood industry and then that sort of prepped my between that background and the background of being building reproduction furniture with hand tools prepped me a little bit for the basis basis of how things work in wood and then as mm-hmm. I got into got to Thomas Moser we start started getting more into the technological production. So Thomas Moser is a very very unique mix of uh, fine handcraft and uh, and technology. We have quite a bit of CNC equipment in the shop. Um, so parts, parts making is, is uh, mostly done on CNC equipment, and then we focus the craft and the assembly and the fine fitting of, of joinery and finishing and that sort of thing. Oh, that sounds very hands-on, for sure. Yeah, that's, that works for me. <laughs> yeah, good on you. Um, I actually wanted to ask you a little bit about the Wood Component Manufacturers Association as well. Mm-hmm. Um, could you tell me about the networking or educational opportunities offered by WCMA, if any? Yeah, yeah. The uh, the as far as the the networking goes, the networking and educational opportunities with it is is really the strong suit of the of the organization. Uh, one mm-hmm. of my favorite professional events of the year is the fall conference that the WCMA hosts every year. That is uh, kind of a combination of shop tours. You know, you usually have one or two speakers that do an educational session during one of one of the evening meetings, and it's uh, it's really or that that the the WCMA membership is just a very diverse group of shops that do a lot of different things. Everybody works in wood, but it's there's a lot of different things there, and there's and it ranges from relatively small shops to really big shops and it ranges from relative or some lower lower tech shops to some really advanced shops that have amazing amazing equipment as far as uh, automation goes that's very cool um are there any other benefits of being a member of wcma that you can think of um Problem solving, I think, is a big one. Um, the The membership of the WCMA is always, or in my experience, always been extremely open with when you've got something going on in your shop and you need some help. If with a couple of phone calls to somebody who has been doing something different, or through the uh, through going to the events on an annual basis, you develop you develop friendships and 
have some people to call and bounce ideas off of each other and find out maybe what happened. Uh, what ha what has happened to them in the past that worked out worked out well on on things. Um, I guess the other thing that was there about the WCMA that was a really impressive thing that I got to I've done it once was the uh, European shop tour uh, event. I think it was three or four years ago uh, in Italy and toured some of the uh, large machinery companies, uh, BSE, SEM, uh, Weinig and got to also tour some local shops around there. And it was the amount of automation over there in those, in those shops was, was very impressive. More, probably more so than what you see in most shops in the U.S. Wow, that, this association sounds like a really good like addition or add on to your actual job. Yeah, very much. It's a, it's a great, it's really a lot of fun to be a member of and experience the stuff that you get to see through traveling around with them. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so about your career, um, was there anything that you found particularly surprising about it? Um, I think the diversity in technology within the industry, there's a big mix of old equipment in some shops and very high tech stuff in other shops. And uh, hey, that's it's interesting how different levels of that mix of old tech and new tech can be uh, um, can be successful in different shops. It's not always that the highest tech shop is the best at doing what they do, but sometimes the shops that are a mix of uh, mix of old, old tech or analog tech and then have invested in really high-end new technology in the areas where it matters can be just as, or can be quite successful in that realm. Um, it's also interesting how uh, how small the woodworking industry is in the uh, in the U.S. It's a clo close knit industry. I mean, if you go to the the biggest trade show in the U.S. is IWF in Atlanta. Usually, when you walk in there, it's not it's not even an hour before you run into run, you're running into in, into friends and colleagues that you that you know from from past events and that sort of thing. That's a little surprising to me. I, for whatever reason, thought that woodworking would be like a booming industry and very popular in the U.S. Maybe because, I guess, um, back in the day, it used to be an option for high school students even. Yeah, yeah I was going to say the, the high school shop program was closed down, I think, a year after I graduated high school. Uh, the oh. local high school where I live currently doesn't have a, doesn't have a shop class. Um, I've been involved in a few extracurricular activities with our local, uh, the local high school where I live, where we've uh, done some events with, uh, there's a homestead that has some, uh, has some shop space where we do some stuff with the kids because it's, you know, there's a lot of people that learn better by getting their hands on things than what they do reading about it or listening, listening to somebody talk about it. Wow. Well, that's a lot to take in. Um, are there any words of wisdom that you'd like to potentially pass down to anyone who might be interested in pursuing this kind of occupation? Um, I think the best thing is worked out best for me is a good mix of hands-on working experience and formal education. Um, and also a firm, a firm understanding of the machinery involved in things. Maybe not if you're in the, Woodworking, it's good to know a lot about woodworking, but it's also good mm -hmm. to know a lot about other things, plastics, metalwork, that sort of thing. And the mix between hand tools and analog tools and then automated CNC. I think it's, you really get the best out of really knowing all of the aspects of that. It mm -hmm. helps, one helps you learn about the other. Um, and never, never stop learning about the new things that are coming out in the world. Um, uh, the, new, the new technology helps us be competitive in a, in a worldwide market. That's very true. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your day uh, to speak to me. I really appreciate it. You're, you're very welcome. Um, and thank you for joining us. And I hope you all learn more about WCMA. For more information, please visit the WCMA Q Career page. Um, goodbye and until next time. <laughs>